Scammers targeting people in our community, trying to trick them into handing over money. That's according to the U.S. Marshals. What to look out for if one of those crooks calls you still ahead. And back to school season can be a lot of fun for children. However, for parents, it can be stressful and traffic only adds to that stress. This noon, Stephen Cavazos explains why one intersection near a local high school has several parents concerned. Live from KSAT 12, the news at noon starts right now. Evacuations continue from Kabul today. The Pentagon saying this morning that there was only one suicide bombing location outside a gate at the Kabul airport, not two. The explosion killed at least 13 U.S. service members and wounded several others. President Biden is vowing to retaliate against the group claiming responsibility for the attacks. However, on the ground in Afghanistan, U.S. forces are still on edge. As ABC's Elizabeth Schulze reports, they're worried about another attack. After the deadliest day for American troops in Afghanistan in more than a decade, the U.S. is moving forward with its evacuation mission. We have the ability to include evacuees on U.S. military air airlift out of Afghanistan until the very end. Ten Marines, one Navy medic, one Army soldier, and one other service member were killed in the explosion. More than 160 Afghans are dead, scores more wounded. ISIS-K is claiming responsibility for the suicide attack, the bomber detonating his explosive device at an airport entrance. President Biden now vowing retaliation. We will not forgive. We will not forget. We will hunt you down and make you pay. Former Army Ranger Jericho Denman was working with other vets to help evacuees and got out of the Kabul airport just minutes before the attack. In 20 years, I never saw uh, an operating force more sleep deprived or, or just working more than, than these Marines and, and other, you know, airmen and soldiers that were on the ground. The terror threat is still high. With just four days until the president's August 31st withdrawal deadline, officials are warning of another possible attack. We believe it is their desire to continue those attacks, and we expect those attacks to continue. And we're doing everything we can to be prepared for those attacks. U.S. officials say there are up to 1,000 Americans who remain in Afghanistan and more than 5,000 people currently at the Kabul airport awaiting flights. Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News. Washington. And here at home, hundreds of Afghan refugees have already arrived in San Antonio and more are expected in the coming weeks. The Center for Refugee Services say they've been busy helping families who anxiously wait for their loved ones to arrive, but need more help from the community. Center for Refugee Services Executive Director Margaret Costantino says they're in emergency mode and don't have enough time or volunteers to sort through the gently used donations. So they're asking for monetary donations or gift cards of up to $100 to distribute to host families of Afghan refugees. They also ask for new items only. We know that they're going to be staying with other friends and relatives, and we want to be able to, to lower the burden of the host families. So our goal is to provide the uh, towel, washcloth, toiletries, uh, the pillow, the blanket, the things that they need today in order to sleep tonight comfortably. A lot of people right now, our hearts are just breaking for everyone who is dealing both um, the U.S. troops that are over there and, um, and seeing that face to face and those who are, have lost loved ones as well as just the refugees who are having to start over and fleeing and just experiencing such trauma. To make a monetary donation, head over to the organization's website at sarefugees.org forward slash donate. Distribution of the items for refugees and their host families will begin on Monday morning at 10 a.m. We have some new details this morning at a, on a murder investigation. Police now say they have a suspect. However, they need your help to find him. This is Alejandro Diaz. San Antonio police say there's an active murder warrant for his arrest. Diaz was already indicted by a Bear County grand jury in connection with the deadly shooting which happened back in March. According to police, on March 13th, two groups of people got into a fight at an IHOP restaurant on Southwest Loop 410 near Marbach Road. At some point, bullets started flying and one man was shot. He was taken to the hospital where he later died. New at noon, two people are in police custody suspected of trying to steal catalytic converters from people's cars while they were worked out at a Northwest Side gym. 
Officers were called to the Gold's Gym on Babcock and Callahan just before 7 this morning after someone spotted the pair trying to steal the converters. The two were picked up a short time later off Callahan Road. Police say there have been a rash of catalytic converter thefts all over the city in the recent months. This pair is facing charges of theft and criminal mischief. A man will have to answer to charges and answer some questions about the reason for a shooting overnight on the southeast side. And the victim was a man driving through a neighborhood with his family. As Katrina Weber reports, police believe it may have been a random crime. A driver looking for help overnight found it in the parking lot of an HEB store in the 4100 block of South New Braunfels. Police and paramedics who responded around 1 this morning also found his wife and one-year-old baby there. They were passengers in the pickup with him when he was hit twice in the shoulder by bullets fired at them. The others in the truck weren't hurt, but the 31-year-old man was rushed to a hospital for treatment. Police quickly spread out across the area and tried to find the shooter. The victim told police he was driving here in the 500 block of Monticello Court when someone shot at his truck seemingly for no reason. A Bear County Sheriff's deputy who pitched in to help noticed a man running down the street nearby and chased him. The deputy caught him in the backyard of a home and had to use his taser to take him into custody. Police believe that 36-year-old man is the shooting suspect, but they say they don't know why he did it. It seems he didn't know the victim. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. It was a noisy and violent morning at an Elmendorf RV park. Police say an argument over a loud pickup truck led to a shooting. As Jonathan Cotto explains, the accused gunman was actually hit by one of his own bullets. A heavy police presence at the Bronig Lake RV Resort Park. Police were responding to reports of a shooting just after 2 this morning. This was in the 13,500 block of Donup Road in Elmendorf. Police tell us a 26-year-old man walked out of his trailer after hearing a driver in a pickup truck making a lot of noise. They say the man told four men in the pickup truck to keep it down. One of those men in his 50s got down from the truck and punched him in the face, knocking him to the ground. Officers say the 26-year-old went back into the trailer, got his gun and shot one of the four men, grazing him on the ear and shooting him in the leg. They say the other three males went on to beat the man, taking his gun. He was shot in the process. EMS assisted on the scene. Both the victim and the suspect were taken to Bamsey, initially in critical condition, but they are now expected to be okay. It's important to mention that three other men were detained and taken into custody. This case continues to be under investigation. Reporting Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. The U.S. Marshals want to warn people about a scam on the rise in our community. They say crooks are calling people and telling them they'll get arrested if they don't pay some fines. According to the agency, recently a fraudulent caller claimed to be a deputy United States Marshal. Then the person told victims that arrest warrants were being issued for their victims or their family members. The scammer then asked people to pay up to avoid getting arrested. The U.S. Marshals warned that they never call people to ask for fines or fees to be paid over the phone. If you believe you are a victim of fraud, report the incident through the FBI's Internet Crime Complaint Center at IC, uh, IC3.gov. And a traffic alert for people on the city's north side. A complete closure will likely add time to your commute. Right now, all lanes of traffic are closed in both directions on Nacogdoches Road between Broadway and Nottingham Road. The closure started at noon today and will last throughout the weekend while crews remove a large crane from a construction site in the area. That stretch will reopen by Monday morning at 5. Concerns over an intersection have some wondering whether it's a school zone or danger zone. The intersection of Jackson Keller and Montview outside Lee High School is causing a worry and some believe traffic is getting out of hand. Our traffic authority Stephen Cavasso has heard some of those concerns and went looking for the answers. I am thrilled with the teachers and the staff. Everything's been wonderful. Hillary Ross couldn't be happier. Her daughter attends the International School of the Americas located within Lee High School. The only problem dropping her off in the morning has been extremely dangerous. Ross says she has spotted a number of traffic issues at the intersection of Jackson Keller and Montview right outside the school. That includes drivers making wrong turns, students starting across traffic, and even drivers attempting to direct traffic. Ross says she has already talked with other parents who share the same worries. Better get here early 
and um, don't get hit. Thankfully, there have been no reports of people being hit by cars, according to the San Antonio Police Department. But Northeast ISD is already working to improve the area. A police officer is currently patrolling the worry spot. A spokeswoman says there is only one way for traffic to enter and one way to exit, and the district is aware that it can be an issue. However, the district still wants drivers and students to be patient and vigilant when going through school zones. Give some space and some time, and you know, typically those school zones aren't more than a couple of hundred yards long and so if uh, drivers can just slow down it's not a big uh, delay in their morning commute and uh, it could save a child's life. Northeast ISD will continue to look for other options if the situation does not improve. Stephen Cavazos KSAT 12 News. Tropical storm Ida continues to strengthen. We've got the latest track for you coming up. And it was the first night of high school football action last night. Larry Mears has some highlights for us coming up. San Antonio is the home to the only World Heritage Site in Texas. How the missions will be at the center of the celebration, which will include virtual and in-person events. That's after the break. Well, this is exciting. The annual World Heritage Festival kicks off in less than two weeks. And this morning, organizers shared details about what you can expect this year. There will be both in-person and virtual programs. You'll also see an indigenous blessing by the Tohon Band of Mission Indians of San Antonio. And a performance by the United States Air Force Band of the West. There are events of all types and for all ages during this five-day festival. We are thrilled that this year we have the return of popular Restored by Light, a collaborative multimedia event with the city's Department of Arts and Culture, and Blue Star Contemporary, and an outdoor exhibit that celebrates San Antonio's sister city relationship with a recent World Heritage Site, Darmstadt, Germany. The World Heritage Festival started back in 2016 after the San Antonio missions were inscribed by UNESCO as a World Heritage Site. This year's celebration takes place September 8th through the 12th, and you can see a full schedule of events on World Heritage Festival. Dot org. So no pressure on Justin yet. He's got a couple of weeks before he has to worry about the weather for that event. Oh, we have to worry. Yeah, look at that. It's already <laughs> almost 90 degrees. Oh. It warmed up quickly, guys, but notice what we're seeing here. More cloud cover. Clouds are starting to move in. We've got some showers and some downpours just off to the east. So we could get some cooling showers today. That's the hope. Of course, uh, we've got football games tonight, though, too, that we are going to have to deal with. Hopefully the rain avoids uh, some of those games. The aquifer is down half a foot, 658.5, still headed in the wrong direction. And your pollen count, molds did jump up today. They're moderate, 540. Pigweed is low. We'll have a look at the radar in the tropics. Coming up. All right, chance of some rain, so we got to watch it tonight because there's a lot of high school football action around town going on. But the clouds are, I guess, what's going to help because I was out there today and a little cloud helped a lot just to a cool down cloud. just a little bit a little so i'm cloud. guessing for those guys uh practicing out there those clouds are helping them yeah clouds will help it's the the lightning that's not going to help us tonight if we have those games hopefully it all times out well the, these downpours usually move along pretty quickly so if there is a delay or something like that we don't anticipate a lot of that uh it'll hopefully happen pretty quickly and maybe we'll get some beneficial rain too. Let's look at the radar. And uh, you see where the action is right now. We've got some showers and some pretty good looking thunderstorms out there. Nothing severe, but uh, some good downpours. And these are there in Carnes County and Gonzales County off to the east of San Antonio. You see them here and those are the lightning strikes. Another nice little cell starting to develop just to the south and east of Cuero. So let's zoom in a little bit closer here. And this is right around Smiley, just to the south of Smiley. That's where we're seeing some of that good heavy rain. And that's now stretching down into Carnes County. This is moving south and west. But there's a piece of energy here moving east to west across the area. So as it moves through San Antonio, there is the potential that we can see some downpours here. We saw a few yesterday. I think we see a little bit better coverage as we get into this afternoon. And we are starting to get some instability out there. This is the way it will potentially look around 5 o'clock. Some scattered showers and storms. Uh, really anywhere you go across our area. And then by the time we get into the nine o'clock hour, stuff starting to quiet down. And then we do it all again tomorrow. Some showers earlier along the coast. And then by the afternoon, scattered showers and storms again on your Saturday. After tomorrow, though, rain chances start to go down. 
get some drier air and more quiet conditions next week. So as far as rain chances are concerned today and this evening, I think our best shot is between three and seven o'clock here in San Antonio. Of course, a lot of those football games get started around seven o'clock. So just to watch the radar closely, have the KSAT weather app with you, and we'll, we'll keep you posted if anything does pop up around here. Uh, there's the scene outside right now. Clouds really starting to build in. 89 degrees at the airport, 90 at Stinson, 87 Kelly, 86 at Randolph. South and easterly winds anywhere from 5 to 10 miles per hour. And you can see the clouds starting to shift through. Uh, 87 Port SA, 90 Stinson, 86 Randolph, 91 right now in New Braunfels. A little bit less cloud cover out west. It's 93 in Del Rio, 90 in Carrizo Springs. And the forecast high today, 93. That's a little bit cooler than yesterday, I think, because of cloud cover and that potential for rain. Heat indices will be it's, uh, near 100 south of San Antonio, but again, just not as hot as it was yesterday. Current setup, we have a little area of low pressure moving through. This is not tropical. This is not associated with Tropical Storm Ida, just a little piece of energy that works uh, east to west across the area, and that's why our rain chances are a little bit better today and tomorrow. There is Ida, Tropical Storm Ida. Winds right now at 75 miles per hour. This is a new update that's just coming in, came in at 1215, and this is moving northwest at about 15 miles per hour. So it is now a hurricane. We'll update that Hurricane Ida based on the winds. That's just, uh, just coming in as it moves across Cuba. Category two storm Saturday evening winds at 105 miles per hour. Then it will move towards uh, Louisiana as a category three hurricane, potentially a major hurricane winds at 120. This will be Sunday morning. Hurricane watches out for basically the entire state of Louisiana, and that includes Mississippi as well over to Mobile, Alabama. Uh, potentially making landfall, we think Sunday evening as a category three storm. This is going to bring big time storm surge lots of rain and obviously very strong winds to parts of Louisiana before moving north and dissipating. Some of the storm surge numbers, these are preliminary, but we think storm surge will be a big issue. Seven to 11 feet there around New Orleans as uh, this storm comes in. So unfortunately, it looks like Louisiana is gonna get pretty, hit pretty hard by this, uh, by this hurricane now. 40% chance of rain today and tomorrow, 20% chance Sunday, drier conditions and hot conditions for next week, guys. Thank you, Justin. Happy birthday, by the way. Thank you very much. You know, some teams usually take maybe a week or two to find their stride. Yeah. Not our team. Was... You guys were all over it last night to kick off the football <laughs> season, man. We were all over town. Lots of great games. Lots of great highlights. Yeah, thanks to uh, Texas Sports Productions, we were able to have some extra games yeah. last night. But yes, our entire crew did a fantastic job. And one of our big games last night was Brandeis and O'Connor. And Broncos sophomore quarterback came, uh, J.C. Evans came off the bench, and he had a huge game. We got that. And many more highlights coming up. school football season kicked off last night. It is off and running. Rivals Brandeis and O'Connor faced off in a non-district matchup. Broncos quarterback J.C. Evans had himself a solid opener, going 12 for 14 for 123 yards and three touchdowns, and he rushed for 75 more on six carries with a touchdown. Very impressive. Brandeis opens with the win, 33-7. to Harlan and Clark facing off at Gustafson Stadium, a non-district play. Clark Cougars quarterback Nick Lee completed five of seven passes for 112 yards and two touchdowns. Clark would score first. Lee to Chris Gertz, 10 yards to make it 7-0 Cougs. And Clark is feeling good today after winning 28-14. Harlan had six turnovers in the loss, three fumbles lost, and three picks. The Batland Billies of Fredericksburg visiting the Sam Houston Hurricanes at Alamo Stadium. Fredericksburg are running back. John Fritch is one of the big billies on campus with 47 yards rushing and one touchdown. Jesse Leha had 163 yards rushing and three touchdowns to help the Batland Billies win 56-6. Leha also added a TD catch. Let's run over to the SAISD Sports Complex with the Burbank Bulldogs and Pearsall Mavericks. Pearsall with the ball trying to even things up, but the snap is low and the ball is loose. It looks like the Mavs recover, but Jeremiah Vallejo knocks it out of the running back's hands, and Chris Mendez jumps on it for the dogs. Burbank trying to get tricky with the fleet flicker here, going deep, but it's off target. And Jorge Herrera for Pearsall is there for the interception, and Burbank takes it 17-7. 
And here it is, folks, our first broadcast on KSAT Me TV of Texas Sports Productions broadcast of the Madison Mavericks and Clemens Buffaloes last night. Clemens returns the opening kick 69 yards in a Madison 7. Very first play, they cough it up. Miguel Becker fumbles for the Mavs. Aaron Bowles catches it as it pops loose. And Madison capitalizes, driving 97 yards when quarterback Caden Mata scores from four yards out. 7 0 Mavs, and the Mavericks win a low scoring contest 14 to 5. We're off to Rutledge Stadium where Veterans Memorial is facing Del Rio. Del Rio, Alex Olivetto, a wide open Weston Ross with a Patri Patriots score. That was just too easy, and the Pats roll 55-20. And for the first time in school history, this is pretty cool. The Holy Cross Knights played under the lights after they were installed this offseason. Holy Cross is up 7-2 in the third on Bernie Geneva. The Knights with the ball, but the deep pass is picked off by Aiden Kristall and returned all the way inside the Knights' five-yard line. Two plays later, Grayson Donald to Ethan Valdez with a two-yard score and it's eight to seven, Bernie Geneva. That said that the big game covered scoreboard for that final and more scores. Bernie Geneva takes it 19 to 15. Veterans Memorial finds the win column 55-20. Southside Cardinals won big time 62 to 14. Southside QB Richard Torres had eight touchdown passes and 302 yards passing. And Santa Gertrudis Academy shut out South San West Campus 46 to nothing. <laughs> And our first big game coverage road trip this season goes down tonight with Blanco at Davenport, East Central at New Braunfels Canyon, and San Marcos at New Braunfels. We'll hear from Davenport Wolves during 1230 sports. The horn. You love that horn, right? <laughs> beep, beep. And you know I love some high school football. Yes. But Batlin Billies is still one of my all-time favorites. Batlin Billies, gotta love it. Gotta love the Batlin Billies, man. It's good stuff. All right, Larry, look forward to next half hour. Fake vaccine cards are becoming easier to find online, and now... The scheme is becoming more advanced. The new service scammers are now offering in hopes of luring people into handing over their personal information. Ida has now been upgraded to a hurricane and Louisiana is bracing to get slammed by that storm. We're tracking the tropics in the next half hour. More with Justin and a national report coming up. It happened just a few minutes ago. Ida now officially a hurricane and officials in Louisiana have already issued an emergency declaration as they prepare to get hit by that storm. Right now, Ida is pushing across the Caribbean. ABC's Victor Oquedo has more. Here along Lake Pontchartrain, the waves are kicking up and the rain has been on and off this morning, but this is not from the storm. Conditions will likely be much more dangerous as she is forecast to pick up strength as she heads this way. Let's go up to our drone. The big concern for New Orleans will be the flooding. Could see up to a foot of rain in the city, along with some damaging winds. Also looking at the potential for some life-threatening storm surge, up to 11 feet along the coast, five feet here on the lake. Louisiana's governor has declared a state of emergency. Hurricane conditions could start as early as tomorrow night. So if you're in the watch area, the time is now to get your plan in place. Hurricane season is heating up. The Gulf could not catch a break last year. Here we go again. Victor Okendo, ABC News, New Orleans. Yeah, they're getting ready for some, uh, some more severe weather, as if New Orleans needs another hurricane. Yeah, really? Those poor people over there. Louisiana, I mean, they saw, what, uh, six systems last year, and here we go again. I'm just a bad situation for them, and uh, this hurricane is, is going to be, I think, pretty significant as it moves into the Gulf. It has now become a hurricane, by the way. We just got that update at 1215 from the Hurricane Center. So let's look at it. Uh, it looks pretty well developed here. Yes, it is moving over Cuba, but the part of Cuba it's moving over, uh, the, the terrain isn't, uh, isn't going to really shred this thing apart. It's sort of low lying there on the end of the island. So it'll be able to cross Cuba without weakening much at all, it looks like at this point, and then reemerge into the Gulf and strengthen as it does. And that's why we think it will become a major hurricane. By tomorrow, we're probably looking at a Cat 2 storm here. Winds over 100 miles per hour sustained. And then by Sunday, 120 mile per hour winds. This will be Sunday morning and then uh, moving into uh, parts of new, uh, not New Orleans, but New Orleans will feel it, but parts of Louisiana here is a category three storm. Now, there is still you know, a cone of uncertainty depending on where this thing makes landfall. New Orleans could be on the bad side of this storm with some pretty huge storm surge. So that'll be something we'll be watching Sunday evening. Everything associated with Ida will stay well to our east, so it does not have any impact on our forecast. 
Very quickly, though, I do want to look at the uh, radar. We have some showers and storms developing out there east of San Antonio. Piece of energy working east to west across the area, so we should see more development even here in town over the next few hours. So be prepared for a few downpours here and there. They shouldn't last too long. We'll put in a 40% chance of rain. Temperatures up around 93 this afternoon. East Julie winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. We'll get you another radar update coming up here in just a few minutes. Guys. Thank you, Justin. And more than 633,000 Americans have died from COVID-19. And now a grim prediction shows just how many more lives could be lost over the next three months. As ABC's Dave Packers explains, hospitals in some states are struggling to keep up. The U.S. now reporting more than 800 deaths per day from COVID-19, the highest average in five months. A dire forecast estimates nearly 100,000 more Americans could die of COVID by December 1st if current trends continue. Across the country, the Delta variant now accounts for nearly 99% of all new cases. These side-by-side -side maps show the dramatic spread of the virus in just 10 weeks. Kentucky's governor emotional as the state hits a new record for hospitalization for the fifth straight day. Seeing nearly five thousand cases and 65 Kentuckians that we lost in just one day's report is um, tough. In Florida, 95 percent of the ICU beds in the state are full. I think a lot of these cases could be avoided by getting the vaccination. 58-year-old Lisa Stedman and her husband were both diagnosed with COVID in early August. After being in the hospital for eight days, she returned home to find her husband had passed away from complications due to COVID-19. It was just like walking into a horror scene. It's just been horrible. Cape Coral Hospital running out of morgue space, now bringing in refrigerated trucks. Our morgues are just not designed to hold that many bodies. This is not being um, exaggerated or blown out of proportion by the media. This is real. In Texas, the Houston Health Department confirming the city's first COVID pediatric death. A boy without underlying health conditions between the age of 10 and 19 who was not vaccinated. But vaccinations in the city are on the rise after a new incentive program was launched that provides $150 gift cards to anyone who rolls up their sleeve. Dave Packer, ABC News, New York. Now to a warning. New concerns over advanced schemes after a dramatic rise in fake vaccination cards. That's according to the Department of Health and Human Services. It says the fake cards are flooding the market, and computer experts say some sites don't just offer fake cards. They claim that they can hack government and hospital databases to change your vaccination status for a price. The CEO of a company that tracks counterfeits and e-commerce scams says in order to buy a fake card, you have to hand, off, hand over a lot of personal information that could leave you vulnerable. They can use your personal information to blackmail you down the line, or they can just sell it uh, for other people for nefarious acts. You can end up being hacked yourself, basically. HHA says it has uncovered up to 20,000 websites related to COVID-19 scams. And fans of Flamin' Hot Cheetos now have a perfect drink to pair with the snack. Details still ahead. And two young ladies playing for the Jack Johnson Jaguars freshman team got to see some action last night. Larry Mares with their big night coming up in sports. A wrestling star used to fighting opponents in the ring is now fighting for your attention in a new comedy. A preview coming up after the break. We think it might be an acquired case. Earlier this week, Domino's was trending after posting this video on TikTok of a watermelon pizza being made. Hmm. That's a pizza where a big slice of watermelon pretends to be crust. The company says the video was all in fun. The creation is not really one of their menu items. So everybody calm down. Would you try it, by the way? If it was real? I'd probably take a bite, but, you know. Who knows? Well, not to be outdone, Mountain <laughs> Dew has a unique product that you can actually get your hands on. PepsiCo has introduced a flaming hot Mountain Dew. Oh man! They describe it as a unique blend of spicy and classic sweet citrus flavor. Oh! The new soda comes in a fiery red can to match the flaming hot brand. It will be available at the end of this month, but only on Mountain Dew's virtual store while supplies last. Hmm. John Cena is a wrestling superstar who now seems to have a hold on movie audiences.
His latest outing for Hulu is the outrageous and R-rated Vacation Friends. ABC's George Pinocchio has a preview. Hope you're comfortable in a foursome. Oh, there's at least one girl involved. John Cena heads the cast of Vacation Friends. The movie is about two couples who meet while vacationing south of the border. One is reckless and wild, but generous and loyal. The other, much more traditional. It's an entertaining ride. It's the movie's called Vacation Friends. I think everyone has a conceptualization of what that means. And of course, it's a comedy, so we take it to an absurd level. This is a private event. Oh, it's cool. We know the bride and groom. We met these two animals down in Mexico. <laughs> Does the salt not taste salty? Oh, because it's cocaine. What? I don't do drugs. Even on vacation? And then those moments of ridiculousness happen very spontaneously, and you never know what you get out of them. That's the power of humor, right? To, to bend all the yuck that's going on in our lives to just, like, give us a, a moment of respite. I love it. The only reason I'm going to do this is because I love you. Mm -hmm. It's because you're my fiancé now. Beyonce. Yeah. Well, I like the sound of that. <laughs> mm -hmm. We do too. Jesus. Beyonce. <laughs> John is a consummate professional. He's so, he was so gracious and so good to work with. He is the real deal. Like how he shows up, what you think about him, he's that guy. And he, and he just, it's from a very genuine place. When someone else makes a choice to invest in you, I never know where the origin of that investment lies. All I know is that it's an opportunity and it's mine to to make the most of or squander. George Pinocchio for ABC News. Looks kind of funny. I'd watch it for sure. You think so? John, John Cena. John Cena? Yeah. yeah. Is, that, is that the only reason? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Justin, hello. Hello. It does look funny, though. Uh, 89 <laughs> degrees uh, so far today. 75 the low this morning. Averages are 95 and 74. So we'll be a little bit below average, I think, today with the chance for some downpours. 106 is the record high set back in 2011. We'll take a look at the radar coming up. Talk a lot about that uh, hurricane. It is now a hurricane headed for the uh, Gulf Coast there in Louisiana. Unfortunately, we're not going to get any rain from it, though, but we do feel sorry for those people in, uh, in Louisiana. Get ready for that, huh? Yeah, it's, it, I, I don't think it's going to be a good situation for them. And we, we know a lot of Louisiana is low-lying, so this storm surge is going to cause big water rises. We'll see how New Orleans fares uh, through all of this, and really the exact track's going to have a, a big bearing on what exactly New Orleans sees. But we know the storm surge is going to be pretty significant. We'll talk about that here in just a second. First, uh, some happier news. Uh, Oh, here we go. Is here. The snap is down. Snap is down. Hold is good. All right. He's he, good. Uh, perfect. Again. One, one of these days, David, I'll make it go left or right just for you. We uh, need to back him up a little bit. <laughs> That's like a short kick. Uh, I love the trees in the background, too. They look like it's fall, but uh, we don't get that here in South <laughs> Texas. Okay. Still very much summer like out there. 90 at kickoff, 86. Uh, halftime sunsets around 801. There will be some downpours out there. I'll caution you there. So if you're heading to some of these games, just know there could be a little bit of rain around. My hope is that maybe we'll get some of this through here uh, before these uh, games get underway. But uh, there's a look at the radar right now, and you can see where the rain is. We do have some lightning strikes detected out there in parts of Carnes County, up across Gonzales County. And now we're starting to see some new development even here in Bear County. So uh, things are getting underway here. And you notice where some of the heavier rain is here moving into Wilson County as well. Uh, we'll zoom in a little bit closer. Uh, just north of Smiley, good little cell there. Uh, moving towards the Stockdale area or just south of Stockdale and Sutherland Springs, some showers. And I mentioned a few small uh, blips there on the radar starting to show up around Lavernia, east side of Bear County. And so even here in San Antonio, we could start to see some development here soon. Uh, and again, these are all moving to the south and west. Forecast shows that we may get uh, an initial wave, if you will, here, and that may push west by 5 o'clock, but still could see some isolated stuff behind that as well. So we'll call for scattered chances today, 40%. And then as we get into tomorrow, another round of some afternoon downpours will develop, and I think it's probably about the same, 40% chance. There's some pretty deep moisture that's worked in, so these 
uh, showers and storms have the potential to put down some decent rain, albeit uh, it'll happen pretty quick. 40% uh, chance of rain 3 p.m. to about 7 p.m. here in San Antonio today. Uh, looking outside right now, you can see some of those clouds trying to build up there into some uh, showers and storms. Temperatures uh, at 89 degrees, mostly cloudy. Dew point is at 71, so it feels like 95. It's pretty steamy out there at the moment. And the cloud cover is just starting to funnel in. 91 to Braunfels, 91 Castroville, 91 in Hondo, 91 in Creosote Springs, popular number. 87 Kennedy, 89 in Victoria with some rain around. And the heat index has popped up to 100 here in Pleasanton, but notice things are cooling off a little bit where we are seeing some of that rain. So a little disturbance working through. That's why we're seeing rain today. All eyes now on Hurricane Ida down here in the Caribbean, starting to cross over Cuba here. Winds at 75 miles per hour. It is uh, newly named, or it's uh, determined to be a hurricane. That was just came out uh, just a little while ago from the Hurricane Center. But by tomorrow evening, we're talking about winds at 105 miles per hour, then a Category 3 storm potentially by Sunday morning. So a major hurricane, and this will be moving in around Louisiana, just to the west potentially of New Orleans, although we still have a cone of uncertainty that stretches from New Orleans back to uh, to western parts of Louisiana, and then moving inland and falling apart, but producing a lot of rain as it does. Storm surge is going to be dangerous with this storm, 7 to 11 feet, uh, even 4 to 7 feet down the coast of Louisiana. So there's going to be flooding here for sure. Uh, the extended forecast for us, all that moisture stays well to our east. 40% chance of rain today, tomorrow, 20% chance on Sunday, and then just some hot and dry weather, it appears, as we get into next week. Temperatures will get close to the 100-degree mark by Tuesday. We'll be right back. First BGC road trip this season will kick off tonight at Davenport High School, home of the Wolves. Entering their second season of football, the Wolves are still sub-varsity and will not play in a district until next season after the UIL's 2022-2024 realignment. Starting a program from scratch is pretty darn cool. There's not a lot of people that get to open a, a school and start a football program and it, it's starting new traditions everywhere. It, it's from the ground up. There's no bad habits. There's no bad seeds in it. Everybody's starting from the beginning. Everybody's meeting each other for the first time. So um, it's been a great experience just watching these kids grow. It's amazing feeling, honestly. Uh, last year it was it was cool because we were setting a culture and the traditions and all that stuff. So. It's just cool to be a part of that. I think kind of like building a brand new culture and building a brand new program is huge. Um, I think it's fun to see all these younger kids grow, especially because we opened the school with just uh, freshmen, sophomore, and juniors. We didn't really have upperclassmen. And I think that it's like really important to me to kind of set the tone and make sure everything here runs smoothly and straight. There you go, David. Beep, beep. Our road trip goes down tonight with Blanco at Davenport, East Central at New Braunfels Canyon, and San Marcos at New Braunfels. Johnson at Jaguars freshman football players Sherry Scott and Cara Rosado suited up for the first high school game yesterday. Cara had three yards rushing, and Sherry played but didn't have a ball thrown her way. They play on both sides of the ball but prefer defense. Uh, I play receiver and safety. I play corner and running back. At first I liked receiver more, but now I'm starting to lead more towards safety. And why is that? Because I like to hit people. <laughs> you like to hit people? Uh, definitely corner. <laughs> and why is that? I get to blow people up. Football is a contact sport, and clearly Sherry Scott and Cara Rosado don't shy away from it. From lifting weights to on-field workouts, these two are giving it their all, knowing the pain is worth it. It's all pretty tiring. And at the end of the day, you're just like, oh, I want to get my helmet off. But in the end, it all pays off whenever you're out on the game day field and you're just playing with everyone. Girls playing tackle football is becoming more common. Still, it can take some convincing to get the parents on board. My mom was terrified and she cried <laughs> when I told her that I was going to play football. She was like, no, you're not. <laughs> well, here I am. <laughs> well, here you are. <laughs> so, yeah. Football teams are one big family, and the sport will also teach you life lessons along the way. Kara and Sherry have great advice for other females looking to play football. Do what you love. Don't listen to other people, because there's going to be a lot of people who tell you that you shouldn't be able to do football and that you're a girl and you're too weak to do it. Do it. <laughs> it might be weird at first, but you just got to do it.
You know, I'm so pumped up for those two. And it's great <laughs> they got the play insane. last night. Awesome stuff. Yep. What do so you want to cool. bet they walk down the hall and not one person messes with them in school? Right. I, I get it, no. Well, they Cara, might be like walking next to him going. Kara is also a high school wrestler, so. <laughs> what? Yeah, they probably don't mess with her anyway. <laughs> wow. These superstars. Good for them. I love the fact oh, they like to play awesome. defense because they, they blow somebody <laughs> blow up. Blow some. <laughs> Bam. Love that. Good stuff. Thanks, Larry. Great story. All right, we got a joke for you, Alicia. You ready? You ready for this one? I did not write I this mean, one, so you can't. You can laugh. Oh. But if it's really good, I'll take the credit if it's right, not that good. Go, David. I've never right, laughed so. at one of your jokes, but what, <laughs> what kind of school do you go to if you're a giant? Okay, where? High school. <laughs> That's a pity laugh. I didn't. <laughs> It's a pity laugh. <laughs> no, I was good. I was good. Ooh, all right, let's get all that. Right. Say bye. But I think he's better at this. SA Live, they might have some more useful back to school information for us today. Mike? Well, the kids are back in school, and we know busy parents can use all the help they can get. And so we have an encore presentation of our back to school special. And we are making life a little bit easier to get back into that school year grind again with affordable fashion and trendy finds for the school year. You know, Budget computers, boy, those things can be expensive, and electronics to get the kids on the tech path to learning, meal prep, and lunchbox tips from a nutrition expert, because they gotta have something to fill up their bellies. Hey, a fun game to really keep kids fit, and it's all about getting some of that exercise and burn off all that, that extra energy. We have a dorm room makeover, can't forget about those kids going back to a college. Everything you need for back to school celebration with one easy call. Plus, performances by the East Central High School Drumline and Honeybee Dance Team, they are absolutely fantastic.